when you are a lookout, you must be able to tell the officer of the deck exactly where it is that you have discovered a ship, a plane, or any other object. From your elevated position in the ship, you can see farther than the officer of the deck. And so you must act as his eyes in telling him exactly where the sighted object is located. Imagine the difficulties of describing the location of this ship. However, it can be reported accurately when you use the proper procedure. The various steps of this procedure can be illustrated with ship models. When you are a horizon lookout in the topmost or similar high position, you will see all about you the horizon, which is where the sky apparently meets the sea or the land. The horizon forms a circle about your ship. Since the horizon has no signposts, you have no ready-made means of describing the location of an object you are spotting. For purposes of measurement, however, the circle has been divided into 360 units, which are called degrees. They are numbered clockwise for seagoing purposes. These numbered degrees can be used as markers or measuring points. Suppose you sight a ship dead ahead. You can describe its location as zero. Notice that it is located on the center line of your ship extended beyond its bow or on your ship's course. All ships will not be sighted dead ahead. Your line of sight, which is the imaginary line along which you look, makes different angles with the bow line when you sight objects in various locations. The measure of this angle is, of course, the number of degrees from the bow line to the line of sight. This angle indicates where the sighted ship is located in relation to your bow line or course. Therefore, this angle is called the sighted ship's relative bearing. Dead ahead is always zero relative, and from this point, relative bearings are measured clockwise. Clockwise means from left to right, just exactly as the hands move on a clock. And relative bearings are always measured clockwise from your course. If you remember this in its relation to your ship, it will help you measure relative bearings. Suppose the ship you sight is a beam on your starboard hand. Now, keep in mind your ship's course and the relative location of the sighted ship. Your course and your line of sight make an angle of 90 degrees. This relative bearing is reported 0, 090. Zero. Suppose the ship you sight is astern. Again, keep in mind your ship's course and the relative location of the sighted ship. Your course and your line of sight make an angle of 180 degrees. This relative bearing is reported 180. Suppose the ship you sight is a beam on your port hand. Again, keep in mind your ship's course and the relative location of the sighted ship. Your course and your line of sight make an angle of 270 degrees. This relative bearing is reported 270. Suppose you sight a ship broad on each bow. While each one of them is the same number of degrees from your own ship's course, their bearings are still measured clockwise. The ship at the right has a relative bearing of 0, 4, 5. The ship at the left has a relative bearing of 3, 1, 5. In reporting and recording bearings, 
Navy style must be followed strictly. This style replaces the point system formerly used. It is designed to eliminate the possibility of misunderstandings in hearing or in reading figures. The same style is used in reporting target angles. Now you will see how typical bearings are written and spoken. First, let's take 180 degrees. This is written 18-aught, but it is spoken 180. Three hundred and five degrees is written three ought five. It is spoken three o oh five. Oughts occurring for the first time in second or third position are reported o. Oh. One hundred degrees is written one ought ought, but it is spoken. One double O. Arts occurring together in second and third position are always reported double O. Forty five degrees is written ought four five. The ought is placed before all numbers having only two figures. But note that it is spoken zero four five. It is always spoken zero when it is the first figure in a number to avoid confusing it with an O in an exclamation. Ninety degrees is written odd nine odd, but it is spoken zero nine zero. An odd occurring after zero is also spoken zero. Five degrees is written ought ought five. All numbers below ten are always preceded by two oughts. This is spoken zero zero five. Either zero or three hundred and sixty degrees may be used, whichever is convenient and consistent. Zero degrees is written ought ought ought. It is spoken zero zero zero. Three hundred and sixty degrees is written three six ought. It is spoken three six o. Oh. This Navy style will help you make your reports and records clear and unmistakable. Always use it in reporting or recording bearings and target angles. Bearings or angles are used in describing locations in many fields of activity. The surveyor in mapping land measures and records angles with a transit. He swings his instrument from one point to another and notes the angle. The navigator of your own ship many times a day takes bearings and uses them to fix his position and plot his courses. Many ships are equipped with a Polaris for this purpose. Other ships are equipped with this type of instrument for measuring bearings. It is known as a surface lookout alidade and is a regular equipment of many surface lookout stations. Very often the lookout will not have instruments to use in taking bearings. Therefore, he must train himself to estimate bearings both quickly and accurately. Here is a lookout without an alidade, yet he's able to report bearings. Ship models can be used to demonstrate how this is done. Now, see what you can do. Suppose you estimate the bearing of this ship. What is it? Notice that the sighted ship is slightly forward of a beam on your starboard hand. Bearing 080 is correct. Now, what is the bearing? Estimate it. Notice that the sighted ship is well aft in your starboard quarter.
bearing 160 is correct. Now, what is the bearing? Estimate it. Notice that the sighted ship is somewhat forward of a beam on your port hand. Bearing 300 is correct. Make a habit of estimating the bearings of all the objects you see even when you're off watch. In this way, you will develop the speed and skill which result only from constant practice in reporting bearings.